Some people say that our mano shrimp aren't as pretty as some of the other shrimp we can keep in the hobby because they're not as colourful. I don't subscribe to that because I think the absence of colour makes their markings stand out all the more. They have that stripe along their back and then the beautiful speckling along their flanks. Males tend to show dots whereas females tend to have dashes but they're both really nice to look at. Then if they've been eating a particular algae they have that magnificent blue colour that they demonstrate. Their efficiency at eating algae is actually what led to them becoming popular in the first place. When back in the 80s, Takashi Amano started using them in his tanks to keep algae at bay. As you might guess, that's where they ended up getting their name from. It's the string and hair type algae that they eat best. They do struggle with the kind of spot algae that you get, but they will eat blackbeard algae. They are always going to go for easier and tastier pickings first. So when you want them to attack your algae, you need to feed them a little less, if at all, for a while. Otherwise, they are omnivorous, so they'll pretty much eat anything that you put in a fish tank. They'll even scavenge dead bodies of fish and other creatures. They can be a little bit aggressive with other shrimp when they're eating, which is to say they're not going to attack the smaller shrimp, but they will steal the food and run away with it if they get the chance. You can keep them with a wide range of other shrimp though. Anything from wood shrimp to crystals to neocaridina. One of the things that makes that successful is they're not going to interbreed with other kinds of shrimp in the aquarium. In fact, breeding won't be successful at all without a specialised setup. They need brackish water for that to happen, so in the wild, they mate in fresh water. Then when she's ready, the female releases the larvae into the current till it flows out into the estuaries. So it can be done at home, but generally the effort isn't worth the yield. It's only really worth doing as an interest project. So in your home aquarium, the female will still release the larvae and other inhabitants of the tank will snap them up as a tasty snack. So some of the smaller fish will. And in that way, they're a good companion for wood shrimp. The wood shrimp can sift them out of the water column with their fans and manipulate them into their mouths, ensuring that they're getting a nutritious meal. So aside from other shrimp, tank mates that you can keep these guys with would include snails of course, and smaller fish that enjoy the same water parameters. To be cautious, any large fish that might try to gobble them up might not be the best idea. However, I have kept these guys with Crebensis, Angelfish and Akara. They seem to have done fine. I'm not willing to say that will work in every case, but it certainly has done at times for me. These shrimp are going to get to about 2 inches, which is 5 to 6 centimetres. So they're not the smallest shrimp to live with fish at all. Plus, if you give them lots of plants and hiding spaces... There's more opportunity from getting away from unwanted attention, hiding away if they feel they need to. They certainly will want a quiet hiding spot when they molt until their exoskeleton solidifies. Sometimes you might find a molt, in fact, and panic at first thinking it's a dead shrimp. But have a close look, most times it is a molt. I tend to leave the molts in and let the minerals be absorbed into the environment. That goes the same for any shrimp and empty snail shells as well. So I would definitely recommend a tank that is planted as heavily as possible for these guys. They will certainly appreciate the cover that plants provide and also the grazing opportunities too. If you are considering getting a squad of these guys to help with an algae problem, I wouldn't consider it their only food source. As soon as you can't see any algae anymore, I'd say it's probably time to start feeding them traditional foods. And also, getting a shrimp or any kind of snail or fish to eat algae isn't really the solution to it. You really need to find the root of it, the cause of the algae, if you want to solve that problem. They might help you clear up, but they're not going to prevent it regrowing. 
So these little invertebrates are always busy, they're always on the go, so you're always going to have something interesting to watch in your tank. It doesn't need to be a huge tank if you're just keeping these or maybe these with other shrimp. Just need to start thinking about larger aquariums when you start adding fish. They do best in a temperature range between about 22 to 26 and a pH of between 6.5 and 7.5. They are quite tolerant to parameters, but with anything you're keeping in an aquarium, consistency is probably what you're aiming for to keep them happy and healthy and well. If you do that, they're quite long lived. They'll easily get to four years of age. Probably five and six. I've heard reports of them living to eight years old. Filtration for our Armanos isn't quite the headache that it can be if you're trying to keep other shrimp. Generally with other varieties we're hoping they're going to breed and we shrimplets can easily get sucked into filter intakes. With these being slightly larger and stronger than some of the smaller shrimp it isn't quite the worry it is with those but I would still recommend pre-filter sponges if you have the likes of hang on back filters and canister filters. Obviously sponge filters are going to be ideal for any shrimp you're keeping. Other than that, Amano shrimp are enjoyable to keep, interesting to watch, widely available, and these days they're not too expensive either. 